Tom Lee just shared a video of himself on CNBC from a couple of weeks ago, implying that maybe the odds of a July rate cut could come back on the table if this week's CPI and PPI report come in good. I will share this clip with you, break down what I think Tom Lee is getting at here and what the current estimates are on Wall Street for CPI. So let's start with the clip from Tom Lee. What about the valuations of the market? How do you counter the argument that they're just way too stretched? Multiples are just way too rich, given what now is likely to be the case of cuts later on. Uh, I mean, I think when someone looks at 20 years of history, that's the argument they'll make. If they look at 90 years of P.E. multiples versus interest rates, when the 10 years between 4 and 5 percent, which is a pretty big range, the median P.E. is 20 times. So we're, we're not even at a median P.E. multiple of what's existed whenever the tenure's been in this range. So, and then if you look at the median stock, it's actually at 16 times. I'd say that there's upside to earnings. I think multiples can expand. I don't think 5,200 is the ceiling for stocks this year. What, what, what feels like a right, the right ceiling now? Uh, I, I know this is uh, gonna be tough for investors to, to embrace it, but I think something like 56, 5,700 is probably where the S&P exits the year, maybe much, even much, higher. Much more backloaded into that than you once thought? Uh, I think it's still backloaded because we'll have the cuts behind us and we'll have visibility into 2025 earnings, which probably could be 270, maybe 280 next year. Well, when you say we'll have the cuts behind us, are you so sure? Right. So let's just take June off the table. Let's, for argument's sake, no June. Yeah. You think the first one's in July? Or it could be September. But it. But it, that's why I asked you if the, if the the move in the market that you just suggested is backloaded. Because yes. you're not going to get a big move until you see the first cut. At uh, this point, now there's a lot of disbelief in the market. That's right. And Scott, one thing to keep in mind is the probability of a June cut has been reduced, but it, it can come back if we have a good April and May CPI, because then it's going to put back into focus what is the trend in CPI. It does feel stubborn when you look at January, February, March. Now, the flip side of the argument that the bulls would suggest is all of this is noise. Keep your eye on the ball. The Fed's going to cut. They may wait. They may not do as many as we thought, but the regime has changed and the economy is going to remain good and earnings are going to be strong enough and they're still going to cut because they're going to be able to and they'll point to the PCE and say, just don't be blindsided by the other noise. That's the story that matters most. I mean, I'd say that that's a story that's going to, as the dust settles from this week, that's what's going to sort of push back into the front lines of people's minds because it's totally different than 2022 and 2023. And we're in the middle of earnings season and think delivered earnings will be good. And interest rates, uh, look, it's not comfortable here at 4.5%, but the economy's handling it. and they're For now. For now, yes. Wow. I mean, that was very fascinating, especially what they were talking about with the markets can, you know, go higher when the Fed starts to cut rates. You actually have Adam Parker on CNBC today that suggested something different, suggested that maybe markets have already priced in the fed rate cuts and it could actually be a sell the news event now back when that was filmed in may of this year the s p was well let's see it was at about 511 for the spy um today the spy is at about 555 that was um about eight percent lower than where you are today so that could bring up a pretty fascinating argument and i will share that clip with you from adam parker on cnbc today because i think that is also valuable to hear but just to elaborate on this more i think tom lee is suggesting if the cpi report this week comes in good you could actually see the fed that considers cutting rates by july but again with how far equities have rallied in such a short amount of time i think adam parker's argument does make a little bit more sense. I would love your thoughts on that down below in the comment section. If you do think this would be a sell the news event when we actually get the first cut, if the markets might be a little spooked when we get the first cut, then maybe the economy is weakening. Now, I will tell you are weakening too much. We know it's weakening, but weakening too much. I will tell you right now, the historical precedence is the S&P 500 falls on average about 23% 
following the first Fed rate cut, because like 95% of the time, the Fed cuts rates as it's already too late. So I'll tell you, historically speaking, the sell the news kind of logic behind the Fed and reducing rates is normally what happens. And before we take a look at what Adam Parker just said on CNBC, yes, we're going to share that clip. Take a look at what Nick Timmerhaus posted on his X account today, and we'll look at another post by him suggesting the Fed may start to cut rates in September. Now, he says economists who produce failed produced detailed inflation forecasts expect the June CPI to have been relatively mild following a lower than expected rating for May. The median of these forecasts has the June core index up 0.22%, which would hold the 12-month rate steady at 3.4%. So there's that rounding um, uh, part of this as well. So technically, if you look here, the median forecast is 0.22% for core month over month. But if you take a look at Deutsche Bank, for an example, they're at 0.25. That would actually come in at 0.3%. Morgan Stanley is at 0.27%. That would actually get rounded up as well to 0.3%. But the rest of them, including Bank of America, 0.24. Barclays at 0.22. BNP Paribas at 0.22. Citigroup at 0.17. Uh, Goldman Sachs is 0.21, Namira at 0.14, TD Securities at 0.18%, UBS at 0.16%. All of these other estimates would have the either round down or round up effect on core CPI month over month. Now, if you come in actually lower than 0.2%, like Citigroup is forecasting, or Namira, or TD Securities, or UBS, that's that's a better 0.2%. But if you come in at 0.24, 0.22, as Bank of America or Barclays are suggesting, that's not bad either. Now, Zero Hedge shared this, and it was pretty interesting. It was from his own post on June 14th. He says, how soon until Nikki Leaks get the tap on the shoulder to get the rate cut narrative ready? And if you guys are unfamiliar, Nick Timmerhaus is seen as like the Fed's mouthpiece. He gives the markets information before the Fed gives it to us to kind of soften the blow for better or for worse. Now, Zero Hedge posted this today. The answer three weeks. Powell will now use July FOMC to inform markets that September rate cut is a lock. Nick Timmerhaus wrote this about two days ago. He said, today's jobs report wasn't alarming enough to put a July rate cut on the table, pricing in just 5%, but says that it could open up a real debate about September. He says the June jobs report will make the July Fed meeting more interesting because there will be, for the first time all year, a real debate over whether to cut at the next meeting in September. He goes on to say the thing is the Fed will need to lay out some stronger hints of a cut, but he also highlights next week's CPI report as a key variable ahead of the July 30th to 31st meeting. He goes on to say the jobs report seems to have affirmed investors' view that the economy is slowing, but not in a drastic way that would prompt more aggressive rate cuts. For President Biden's re-election campaign, the continued job growth counts as a positive, but the rise in the unemployment rate robs it of a valuable talking point. The June report marked the first time since 2021 that the unemployment rate clocked in above 4%. Now, again, if you exclude government and healthcare jobs, the June jobs report was only positive by about 50,000 jobs, which is far less impressive than the 206,000 on the headline number that we got. He goes on to say that some Fed officials will say that the risk of a further weakening in the labor market aren't desirable, even as others may argue that inflation still isn't showing enough progress to cut rates. While July may be too early for a rate cut, a mild inflation report next week could lead to Fed doves who are more worried about labor market weakness to argue that it is time for the central bank to tee up a September rate cut. Nick Timmerall goes on to mention the SOM rule, which if, if you're a viewer of this channel, you know exactly what that is. It says, a rule of thumb popularized by economist Claudia Sam says that if the, if the average of the unemployment rate over three months rises a half percentage point or more above the lowest the three-month 
uh, average went over the previous year. The economy is in a recession. Over the past three months, the unemployment rate has averaged 4%, 0.4 percentage points above the three-month average low of 3.6% over the past year. Fed Mary Daly said, I don't want to pull to pull up too short or too early and then have inflation stay high. That's a terrible, terrible situation. I refuse to do that, she said in a recent interview. At the same time, officials can't just say for sure that because the labor market is strong today, it's going to be strong tomorrow. She also said, when you're too confident that your view is correct, you're prone to make mistakes. Moreover, the Fed was able to fit, fix it, its mistakes two years ago by raising rates rapidly. If you're behind on cutting rates when the labor market starts to falter, it's really challenging to get that back on track. It's just not the same thing, said Daly. This article from Nick Timmerhouse also goes on to say, if consumers cut back too much, employers could respond by cutting staff, turning what has been a virtuous cycle of rising employment and rising spending into a vicious one. They go on to mention that economists at Goldman Sachs reckoned that as a result of slowing population growth and more Americans hitting retirement age, the economy only needed to add about 70 to 80,000 jobs a month to keep the unemployment rate steady. Now, as a result of the jump in immigration, they think it could be around 200,000, but that is with very little confidence. Given these difficulties, Goldman Sachs thinks the best thing to do is watch the unemployment rate, which measures the share of people working or seeking work who are unemployed. If it keeps turning higher in the months ahead, it will be an indication that the labor market has moved from a point of balance to one of deterioration. Now, I think this is very important heading into tomorrow because Jerome Powell is going to get grilled by the House and then he's going to get grilled by the Senate coming on Wednesday. Now, Jerome Powell's probably going to say some things that that lean more towards being dovish, more towards maybe we should start cutting rates soon. Now, I, I want to ask again, the real question is, is that something that the markets look at positively? Or do we take the historical precedence of when the Fed starts to cut, that's when, you know, things get bad and that's when you should sell stocks and then that begs the question if the markets truly are forward looking and that's the narrative that we go with could a overly dovish jerome powell tomorrow actually be a negative thing for markets as investors say oh crap fed's about to cut rates in september maybe we should sell stocks now and let me play that clip now from um adam parker on cnbc and let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comment section earnings season getting underway as you know takes us to our talk of the tape whether this rally can keep going if the economy is slowing and the fed isn't cutting let's ask adam parker he's the founder and ceo of trivariate research courtney garcia is here as well of pain capital management both cnbc contributors good to have you both here that is a question right i mean there seems to be more questions now Adam, about the state of the economy and where we're going to go from here. We've come a long way. Market's done real well in yeah. the first half of the year. Now what? Well, I think the, the Fed commentary tomorrow will matter for sure. Um, no big earnings pre-releases negative here in the first week, so I don't expect a, a bad earnings season. Um, my suspicion is that September is when you'll see downward revisions. The numbers for the second half of the year are still too high. And so the they're too high. Yeah, they are. And they're too high for next year. Fourteen and a half percent growth is what's in the numbers for 2025. Does I think that, does that's that mean too high. that the, the market multiple is too high as well. They're plus 21 times a little more than that. Yeah, I look, I think the problem is you walk in the door now and you say, OK, what do I need to believe to get 10 percent plus upside 6100 on the S&P? Right. Uh, I have to look at 26 or 27 earnings or I have to embed a lot of multiple expansion. That's why people have been cautious. The question is. Uh, does the narrative change at all about the dream that AI can give me on earnings in the out years? If, if that narrative changes, we'll get a correction in the equity market. If people still believe the dream and it's still innocent until proven guilty for a lot of companies, it could be okay. I, I kind of look at it and think equal chance, 10% up, 10% down. Still, because you've been yeah, saying that for a while. It still yeah, feels that way? It feels to me like it's hard to get there. I, I look, we've been directionally you know, positive on, on the market, I'd say, but not, uh, uh, you know, I, I think it's hard to get 10% plus upside without uh, a dream that 26 and 27 earnings are going to be up a lot. Is, is the dream court the rate cuts that the market is expecting? Is, is that the 
the key to the dream? Yeah, that's been the whole focus. Like, I feel like a broken record talking about the Fed going to lower interest rates, but that's really what the markets continue to be focused on. And as we continue to get data out, right, we're seeing that unemployment ticked up to 4.1%, which Mm -hmm. is showing a slowing of the economy. You're seeing that if the PCE numbers continue at that 0.08% month over month, we'd actually be on track for that 2% year over year target by the end of the year. So all of this is really just showing that there's more and more of a higher likelihood that the Fed's going to cut rates at some point this year. And interestingly enough, we're seeing more money go into cash. We're over $6.1 trillion. That amount just went up last week by the highest amount in the last two months. So people are still nervous. There's still a lot of money to go in the markets, which just adds this whole idea that you can eventually see a melt up. People are chasing momentum, but once rates go down, those money markets aren't paying 5%. That money is going to make its way back in. And I think at a certain point in time, you are going to see that happen. The question is when, but I don't think you want to be behind that. I'll say something crazy. Okay, so if there's one maxim that we all believe in, I've said and written this 100 times since 2011, is don't fight the Fed. Right. Right. And yet, I know the market gets increasingly anticipatory. Once we learn something, then it's three months before. Maybe the crazy thing this cycle will be that uh, you kind of, yeah, sure, maybe you, you sell you sell the first you know, cut. That basically you're already paying for some of this accommodation and that people are going to say, all right, well, I buy the market, you know, I bought it really since Jan 23, thinking we we're close to the hiking. And now now maybe it's hard to get the multiple expansion from here and I need mm-hmm. the earnings to come through. And, and so maybe that's what's different this cycle is the one thing everyone believes in is no longer the case. Court, you say one of the biggest risks is the Fed cutting too soon. Now, I wonder, as the data has been a bit softer over the last couple of weeks, whether we're starting to come into the risk zone of the Fed cutting too late, that by the time they actually do cut, it's too late. It's a fine line. I mean, it's a tough position that they're in, right? I mean, that's what they don't want to do is cut too soon and create a melt up or cut too late. And then the economy is in a bad position. I don't think we're there yet by any means. I mean, I think if they are cutting and it's a pretty high likelihood they're going to cut September, definitely by, well, not definitely, but a higher likelihood by December. I think in that range, the economy is still holding up. You're saying inflation is increasingly becoming a concern for consumers. They are pulling back. But overall, incomes have been going up faster than inflation, which is why the economy has continued held up. So if that continues to happen, I don't think they're going to be behind the curve. But it's a tough position they're in. I mean, they need to try to get that right. So while I'm not a fortune teller and I don't know exactly how markets are going to react to maybe the Fed being more dovish, tomorrow than the last time we heard from the fed it's something worth considering that maybe the markets do the opposite of what everyone thinks everyone thinks rate cuts are great the the faster we get them the better maybe just maybe the quicker we get them the worse off things will be now i'm not as concerned about that as that as i am for the elevated earnings expectations That, I think, is a bigger problem. I think it's going to be really hard to come through with earnings expectations as high as they are. And I think we could be set up for some pockets of disappointment. But again, we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.